Good morning. So, where is it? Second Samuel. OT. They are busting in fighting some Philistines. I don't mean that in the uh, rhetorical sense, but in the literal sense. The people of Philistine. <laughs> uh, okay, so they, they, uh, David's kind of on the run. Uh, David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men, I don't know who those guys are, <laughs> broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this the, not the blood of men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. Now, it seems crazy, because dude just asked for it, and then he got it by the machinations of others, perhaps divinely inspired, perhaps individually inspired. And all the time, we ask for stuff from God. I ask for stuff from God. All right, well. And... So often he brings it to me, and so often I'm like, yay, and I hold on to it, and I play with it, and I dance around with it, and I talk about it, and I tell people about it, and uh, cherish the crap out of it. Totally normal, totally good. But another thing we were called to do, perhaps not with every blessing, but keep your eyes peeled, is to do as David did and pour it out before the Lord. Don't don't cherish this blessing. Don't take this and do it before the men who then come and take it to the rest of the army and lord it over them. It becomes this anecdote of and triumphal cheer. But take the blessing. Perhaps use it. Drink the dang thing. I don't get that part. Maybe someday that will be revealed to me. Drink the blessing. Take it, use it, but then pour out the the efforts of that day. Pour it out to the Lord. Just dump it, dump it on the sand. Because you know, I think sometimes I get into that. Uh, you know, like when you eat less, you gain more weight because your body goes into starvation mode. I think it's easy to get in that mode with the blessings of the Lord and. When you're like, ooh, times are tough, and I'm waiting for a blessing of some sort to let me know I'm on the right road, or just because I want some, and then when you get it, you cling to it like a like a drowning man to a life raft. When what we're kind of called to do is just, you know, what? just ask it new. It'll be delivered to you. Use it. Give it back to him. Let it go. Pour it out to the world. Share it with others. Whatever. Just let it. Let it pass on through. That you might be in a continually sustained state of grace with Him, where you're just relying on the Lord every day, instead of going, "Yay, blessing! Okay, cool. Now I can chill on my own for a while and run with this blessing." Every day, come before Him, prostrate before Him, and relinquish yourself. And admit yourself a nothing without him, you know. Not even like, ooh, but no, I have the blessing of the Lord. I can, now I can, now I can roll for a bit with his insignia before me, and things are the waters are gonna part, and the mountains are gonna fall, and blah 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 blah. But no, just let it go. Re return to that 
shambles, humbles state. And it kind of looks like poetry with sniffles in it. And and seek him anew, just every, every day, every moment. Just uh, keep giving yourself up, coming back, and knowing that he can sustain, not just once. It's not like Christmas comes just once a year for God. You know, for us it may. But we should be giving every day as well. And just get in that loop of sustenance. So cling not to the blessings. Pour it up for the Lord. As soon as I go back to sleep in the car ride in North Carolina and wake up, maybe I'll do that. <laughs>